there is so much that that can be done with this app in concert with your DAW. And so I, you know, wherever you are in your musical career, uh, however you interact with music notation, I suspect there's something here that will be useful to you. Hey everybody, it's Noah with Producer Hive, and in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing an app called PlayScore 2. PlayScore 2 is a sheet music scanning app that works with the camera in your iOS or Android device to take an image of a piece of sheet music, piece of notation, and uh, convert it using optical music recognition technology to a MIDI file. And then what you do with that MIDI file within the application, you have a bunch of playback options. So this is a great practice tool. Um, or if you are working in DAWs, working in engraving software, you can uh, just export this MIDI data and manipulate it there. Now, if the app is good, then this could be a game changer for any musician who's working with sheet music on a regular basis and either wants to be able to convert it to MIDI data or wants to be able to hear it while they're working with it. PlayScore 2 did send this to me for free so that I could review it, but they have not paid me uh, to do this video. And so you're going to be getting an honest review from me. If it's good, I'm gonna tell you. If it's not good, I'll tell you that too. Um, and so without any further ado, let's check it out. Now, whether you are a seasoned professional who's playing out every night or a bedroom producer whose stuff is really good but nobody's heard of it yet or a beginner instrumentalist who's just learning how to play music and and just learning how to read sheet music there is something in this app i think for everybody basically the the premise behind PlayScore 2 is that it allows you to take a photo of a piece of sheet music um, and then it will convert that sheet music into a MIDI file. And uh, with that MIDI file, you can get PlayScore to, uh, to like play along with the sheet music and it runs a cursor over the, the staves as it plays. Or you can send that MIDI file to your computer uh, where you know you load it up in your DAW of choice, and then you can start to work with that MIDI file. You can you can break it apart. You can um, you know stack harmonies on it. Whatever you want to do, that MIDI file is at your disposal. So um, without any further ado, let's take it for a spin. I hit the I hit the camera button, and so now I am going to try and get a photo of this score. And what I suspect we are going to find out um, as I take this photo is that you really have to get it lined up quite neatly in order to to get it to work. So I'm going to do my best to straighten this out. Unfortunately, this is a, um, a Shermer book that is not spiral bound. Now, if it were spiral bound, it would lie flat and it would be nice and neat and super easy to get this picture. But since it is not, it might not work. But let's try it. Get a little shot. Eh. So far, it's okay. Okay, so that that turned out quite well, and you saw how quickly it loaded up. Um, that that mini file after it after I got the picture, I didn't speed that up. That's how fast it works in real life. So if you are in trouble because you didn't review your music before rehearsal, but you got five minutes before things start and uh, and you don't wanna take the time to go plunk out notes at the piano, this is a pretty quick and easy way of getting the tune in your ear. You can manipulate the tempo of your file using this little slider here that I'm adjusting on the screen. So if I play now, it's gonna be painfully slow. Or <laughs> I can I can speed it up quite a bit. Uh, that wasn't quite right. Um, yeah, so some of these harmonies didn't turn out exactly right. Some of the notes are are messed up. But for for what I'm using this for right now, this like quick review before a rehearsal, it's it's more or less fine. Um, 
you kind of have to know what you're looking for in order to catch mistakes. That's the issue. So if you're a, a brand new beginner and you don't get the perfect image, then you might be a bit misled. Um, so that that's one thing to consider. Let's see, this is a Daggio, so I'm gonna put it around 70, I think. Um, but if you are uh, like me and you're not a very skilled piano player, this is a, a pretty handy way of having your accompaniment ready to go, um, even if you don't have a piano player ready to play with you. So what I'm gonna do now is see if I can sing along with this. I'm gonna speed it up just a little bit, which is not actually how you're supposed to do it, but that's okay. Der Weisheit Geist dem neuen Paar. That, that turned out quite well. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and that's not all you can do with it, right? You can use it for your rehearsal. You can, or not your rehearsal, but your practice before rehearsal so that the director doesn't realize that you um, slacked off all week and didn't get your music learned. Uh, but you can also take this MIDI file, export it, and play around with it in your DAW. Um, you can also, you've got some other functionality here that I can point out. You don't have to play everything as the piano, that's what it defaults to, but you've got some other options here. So let's say I wanted this to be played on violin. Uh, I, could, I could make my first part on violin, and then the bottom part I could play on harpsichord. Why not? That might be fun. So let's hear how that sounds. Not bad, right? Um, now, if you are used to working in DAWs regularly and you have your, your nice VSTs, that's not going to sound great, but it's kind of fun to play around with. But let's see, you've also got a count in so that it doesn't start playing right away if you need some time to like put your phone down or put your, in this case, an iPod down or put your Android device down, whatever. Um, you can, uh, you know, you can give it... In, in bars, you can like say count in four bars. It's got these, uh, you know, you can turn the help on and it'll put these dialog boxes in front of everything so that you can identify stuff. You can also turn that off so that you have room to work. Let's say you are tired of trying to get the perfect photo out of your um, book bound uh, Shermer book of arias for bass. In that case, what you would, what you could do, if you have a PDF file or any sort of image file of your music that's just on your computer, send it over to your device and then load it up using uh, this icon here down at the bottom where you can load in um, the image files. You don't have to take the picture with your device. You could load it in from your photos folder. So, that, I mean, that's that's the basic gist of what you can do um, in the device. And let's see what we can do in the DAW. Okay, so here we are in the studio. We have our, uh, our, our MIDI file that's ready to go. And we're going to see what we can do with this one page of a bass aria uh, in our DAW. So I'm going to hit the share button. Um, I'm going to save it as a MIDI file. I could also save it as a music XML or save it as a document, but I'm going to save it as MIDI. And then I'm going to airdrop it to myself. There I am, Noah's Mac Mini. And it came through. So now what I'm going to do is I'll clear out these other channels that I don't need. I will drop this right in my MIDI column there and open it up, what do we see but the music that we just scanned in, uh, in all of its imperfections. So keeping in mind that now we've got the ability to edit this. Before, it was just going to um, you know, play whatever, was, whatever it got in the picture, but now um, you know, we can play around with it until it is exactly what we are looking for. If you are like me, a, um, a teacher, and you spend a lot of time putting together uh, play-along tracks for your students, then this 
app is really it's it's something of a dream instead of buying those play along tracks that come with scores you can make your own um, very quickly and easily so uh, i'm gonna just drop contact on here and grab the first thing that appeals to me maybe i'll do the maybe i'll do the organ um got a nice organ on here yeah so i'll grab the symphonic organ and we'll hit play and see how it sounds that's nice yes That's lovely. Um, and so, you know, just like that, we've got what is a, a, a much better play along than you will typically get if you, you know, buy a, a, a score that comes with a, a play along CD. I will take this any day over that. You know, if you wanted to, this would be a, a tremendous time saver if you were trying to break up parts that are in a score or you know you would probably use the music xml file in order to do that you would take your different parts you would put them in in the different um in your different channels uh you would then you know uh take the notes that that you need for each instrument so let's say i'm uh gonna set this up in different voice parts uh so i've got my this is my master here. I'm going to turn this into um, the uh, baritone. And then I'm just going to clear out uh, all the stuff that I don't need here. This is probably not exactly right because there's some um, there's some uh, uh, crossed voices in here. So this might not be exactly what we're looking for, but um, let's give it a shot. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's probably right. Um, and then we'll say that this is our tenor here. Uh, so then we can, uh, da, da, um, we'll get rid of the bass voice or the baritone voice, and we will get rid of the voices above it. Like I said, there's there's probably some voice crossing. This might not be exactly right, um, but it gives you the idea of what is possible. And you know, we could we could actually start setting these up as different instruments, um, or uh, better yet, let's just move this up an octave so that you can hear the difference here um, between the baritone and the tenor voices. Ah, uh, that's. I'm sorry, Mr. Mozart, I don't think that's what you actually intended there, but you get the idea. This is a, a, a process that would allow you to set up all of your solo tracks and all of your play along tracks very quickly. You know, you get them arranged in your, um, in your, in your different channels, and then you select for the channels that you need, uh, for each individual play along. Um, so, you know, sometimes you, I mean, the students are going to want their solo and they're also going to want their solo in context. And then they're going to want one without their part that is just the context, so just the other voices. Um, and that's very helpful. Likewise, if you are an arranger or um, someone who is uh, maybe doing an orchestration of a piece of music that is just in the in its reduced form, like a, 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 a you know, the, the piano, uh, condensed version, then this is going to save you like the first three steps of getting that score ready. You take the piano part, you drop it in your DAW, and then you um, explode it with your orchestration skills. Um, or you do your arrangement based on you've got the original part, you don't have to um, input the notes and then you've, you've got something ready to go. Now, uh, probably we would want to dress up our instrument a little bit to make this a little bit more lifelike if we're if that's what we're going for. Um, and we might as well be going for that because it sounds better if you make it a little more human sounding. Um, we could also, you know, if you take a look at these, um, if you take a look at, at the velocities, looks like we've got our 
uh, our accompaniment going in at 60 and our solo going in at 100. Um, so that, I mean, that's actually kind of handy because that allows you, even with these uh, crossing voices, that allows you to just grab all of your uh, solo notes and um, and select them out. I just I just copied the solo notes. I'll get rid of that. So then we can hear just the solo. I hope. I hope that's what we did. Yes, exactly. Because we and you know you might remember from when we took the the uh, image to begin with, we missed a couple of notes here. They just disappeared. Um, ba -da -bum -bum. Well, I think that just about covers that. Um, there is so much that that can be done with this app in concert with your DAW, um, and so I you know wherever you are in your musical career. Uh, however you interact with music notation, I suspect there's something here that will be useful to you. So there you have it. You've seen how PlayScore 2 works. Uh, you've seen how it looks. You've heard how it sounds. So probably you have a pretty good idea at this point of whether or not it will be a useful addition to your workflow. And the thing that I'm noticing over and over again is that if I can get the perfect photo of the score, then it'll get me like 95 to 100 percent of the way there i might be occasionally adding a beat missing a beat um, something might end up in a weird transposition but for the most part it gets very very close if you've got if, if you can't get a good image though it is basically useless so keep that in mind if you've got a bunch of illegible scores you're not going to be able to get very far with them and play score two so uh, maybe in play score three the artificial intelligence will be there to correct your images um, but for right now it doesn't do very well with bad photos so with that thanks so much for hanging out with us if you like what you're seeing and you want to see more of it be sure to subscribe to the producer hive youtube channel where there will be more stuff just like this coming out in the future uh, hit the notification bell so that you're aware of it every time we put out new stuff you could also check out producerhive.com which is just a treasure trove of written content and reviews and and um, explainer articles all sorts of stuff check it out worth your time guaranteed uh, and yeah, we'll see you next time.